The Long Night may have actually happened during the Andal invasion, and there are lots of hints in the books of this. If this is true, then this could be the true origin of the White Walkers. HBO actually said the Game of Thrones prequel is going to show us the true origins of the White Walkers. So what else could they be referring to? Now, let's start with the evidence from the books. In the books, Old Nan says the Long Night happened before the Andal invasion. But if you listen to her story again, you can see that she contradicts herself. In that darkness, the others came for the first time. They were cold things, dead things, that hated iron and fire and the touch of the sun. If you didn't catch it, I'll just point it out for you. The others hated iron. This is important because it is a fact that the Andals brought iron to Westeros in the first place. Not only that, but pay attention to the wording of the story. They hated iron and fire. In the world of ice and fire, it is said that the Andals first swept through Westeros with fire and sword. And what were their swords made of? Iron. The others hated iron and fire. And the Andals first swept through Westeros with iron and fire. The others also hated the touch of the sun which could also allude to the seven-pointed star of the Andal religion, the Seven, but I digress. Now, it could be argued that Old Nan just doesn't know any better. She could just be saying iron because, well, it sounds better than saying the others hated bronze and fire. So, instead of relying on an old woman's tales, let's tap into some old books. In A Feast for Crows, as Sam is reading old books, he finds an account of the Long Night that spoke of the last hero slaying others with a blade of dragon steel. Both him and John think it is Valyrian steel. So, if Valyrian steel existed during the Long Night, then Valyria existed during the Long Night. This would then mean that the Andal invasion occurred during the Long Night. Why? Because the Andal invasion was precipitated by the rise of Valyria. The Andal invasion was a flight. The Andals fled Essos from the rising power of the Valyrian freehold. So, this account of the last hero wielding a blade of dragon steel would insinuate that most historians have their timeline all wrong. However, this is but one mere account and not enough to conclude that the timeline is that far off. So, let us return to Sam and read what else he found in his search. Those old histories are full of kings, who reigned for hundreds of years, and knights riding around a thousand years before there were knights. You know the tales. Brandon the Builder, Simeon Star-Eyes, Knight's King, we say you're the 998th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. But the oldest list I've found shows 674 commanders, which suggests that it was written during long ago. The old histories are clearly wrong, but the list of Lord Commanders Sam found only cements this fact. Let me explain. The Night's Watch was founded before the Long Night even ended, as it is said they fought in the Battle for the Dawn, and the Long Night is believed to have occurred about 8,000 years ago, yielding about 1,000 Lord Commanders. However, there weren't that many Lord Commanders according to this list Sam found. So the Long Night was not actually that long ago. There were only 674 Lord Commanders in that list. Now, looking at the previously believed number of Lord Commanders, 1000, each commander reigned at an average about 8 years in the span of those supposed 8000 years. So, using this same logic as a metric, if there were only 674 Lord Commanders 
and they each reigned at an average of about 8 years, then this list would actually put the founding of the Night's Watch and the coming of the Long Night at about 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago is right within the range of the Andal invasion. Before John interrupted, it is likely that Sam was about to suggest that this oldest list of Lord Commanders was started during the Andal invasion, meaning that the Night's Watch began and the Long Night ended in the midst of the Andal invasion. We all know Sam was going to say something revelatory. George wrote John to interrupt him for a reason. What else do you think he might have said? Look at the wiki on A Song of Ice and Fire. Out of all these known events, which one is the one Sam would have said? Which event, other than the Long Night, is known to us and mentioned many times in the books? Which event did George not want us to know occurred during the Night Watch's founding? No one really knows when the Andal invasion happened. This was actually said to Jamie Lannister, and it was said by a very educated person, Hoster Blackwood. Jaime actually thought that Hoster would get along with Tyrion, as they could both argue about books, because both are very well educated. So Hoster is smart, just like Tyrion. And he said no one really knows when the Andal invasion happened. Then we have Sam, who is also smart. He was about to say that the list of Lord Commanders was started during... Well, when do you think? So, the Long Night could have happened about 5,000 years ago. Now, do you know what else happened 5,000 years ago? 5,000 years ago is when Azor Ahai was first prophesied to be reborn. With the corrected timeline, this then coincides with the Long Night. Azor Ahai was prophesied to be reborn 5,000 years ago because 5,000 years ago is when he did his job and ended the long night. He was done. He retired. He walked away. So, soon afterwards, the prophecy came that he would come back and be reborn. Now, there is more evidence. We also have architectural evidence suggesting the long night was not that long ago. Storm's End was supposedly built during the Age of Heroes by the First Men. However, according to A World of Ice and Fire, Storm's End was not something the First Men were capable of for many thousands of years. Not only that, but the Maesters also speculate that the story of the castle being the seventh indicates that the castle was actually built during Andal times. Now, let me explain. This passage is not implying that the Septons revised the history thousands of years later. It is implying that the Septons were there for the history. They were there to see Storm's End be built. And that is why they were able to concoct this tale first. The tale of Storm's End being the Seventh Castle. A castle not built during the Age of Heroes, but during the Andal Invasion. Now, I know what you're going to say to refute all this. Brandon the Builder In legend, it is said Bran the Builder built many structures. That he was the reason for these advanced constructions. That would explain why Storm's End was built during a time when it shouldn't have. But I have something to tell you about Bran the Builder. And you're not going to like it. Nobody's going to like it. But this comes from George R. R. Martin himself. The link will be in the description below. It's from the official westeros.org website, so this is credible. The person that George talked to was told this. Then they told us, and this is what they said. Oh, and he did mention that he put lots of legends into the books, such as Bran the Builder. Bran the Builder is supposed to have built the Wall, Winterfell, and Storm's End. George mentioned that he has become a legend so that people will look at a structure and say, wow, it must have been built by Bran the Builder, when it actually was not. This is George's attempt on creating a world with myths and legends, 
So if at some point you see, they say it was built by Bran the Builder or Lan the Clever, realize that it's part of the mythos. Bran the Builder is a legend, so people would look at an architectural marvel and attribute it to him when it was really not his doing. Bran the Builder did not build Storm's End, Winterfell, or The Wall. You cannot argue with this or deny it. This is from the So Spake Martin archive, an archive of all of his interviews and correspondence, an archive he actually acknowledged and approved. Now, since Bran the Builder did not help raise Storm's End, then the only answer would be that Storm's End was raised during Andal times, as the maesters say. This is why it does not match other structures the first men built during the Age of Heroes, because it was actually built during Andal times, when the Seven were first introduced, and that is why, in legend, it is said to be the Seventh Castle. So all this would mean that the Andal invasion either happened earlier than we believe, or the Long Night happened later than we believe. Whatever the case, the Andal invasion must have coincided with the Long Night. And there's more architectural evidence corroborating this. Winterfell. Legend says that Brandon the Builder raised Winterfell as well, after the generation-long winter known as the Long Night. However, maesters have also studied Winterfell, and the oldest part of Winterfell. The first keep. One maester definitely proved that the first keep could not have been built prior to the arrival of the Andals, because the first keep is a round tower, and the first men and early Andal invaders only built square towers. Round towers came sometime later. Now, let me explain why this definitely proves that the Long Night happened during the Andal invasion. As you know, Winterfell was built after the Long Night. However, according to this passage, that could only have been after the Andal invasion started, because the first keep was built first. More precisely, it could only have been built late into the Andal invasion, because even early Andals raised square towers and keeps. Round towers came some time later. So, since Winterfell was raised during the later part of the Andal invasion, the Long Night then happened during the early part of the invasion, because the architectural advancements that spawned round towers would take years, more than a generation, which is how long the Long Night lasted. However, there is one more thing about Winterfell, the crypts of Winterfell. The crypts are actually part of the first keep, the oldest part of Winterfell. So the crypts are just as old, if not older. However, there is something peculiar about the crypts, a tradition the Starks have been doing for thousands of years. By ancient custom, an iron sword has always been laid at the lap of each Lord of Winterfell. This custom was likely started when Winterfell was first built. So, they had iron since the very beginning. They had iron swords since the crypts were first built. They had iron when it was the Andals who brought iron in the first place. Now, I want to clarify that even the Kings of Winter had iron swords on their laps. When Ned Stark said Lords of Winterfell in this paragraph, he meant the kings in the north, the kings of winter. And there's one more thing about the kings of winter. Their crown was made of bronze and iron. Not only that, but in another paragraph, it is said that bronze and iron were the metals of winter dark and strong to fight against the cold. This could be why it is said that the others hated iron, because it is strong and dark to fight against the cold. 
However, George recently said something that also alludes to the long night actually occurring later than we believe. As you know, HBO recently greenlit a new Game of Thrones prequel. And here's what George had to say about it on his blog. He says that this prequel is set 10,000 years before the events of the main series. However, he then adds one little stipulation that this might be wrong because we are assuming that the oral histories of the first men are accurate. He then says that there are maesters who insist it has only been half that long. Half of 10,000 years ago is 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago is right within the range of the Andal invasion, just like what the list of Lord Commanders told us. I believe the Long Night happened during the Andal invasion. But what does this all mean? If it is true that the Long Night occurred during the Andal invasion, why would George want to hide this from us initially? Well, it could be that the Andals...